Hi, and welcome back to my channel. Got a guest speaker here. Well, welcome back. Today is a little different. Um, I'm not doing any try on haul or anything like that. It is June, so it's the mental health awareness month and it's no secret that i suffer from anxiety and panic attacks and anxiety attacks i've basically suffered since i was a teenager in middle school and it's something that has really affected my life when i was younger it really affected me like i didn't want to go out i didn't um like I had just constantly had anxiety. I had to switch schools. There was even one time during my confirmation, I had to come out, like leave in the middle of the confirmation, um, stop outside because I was having a panic attack. Like two, three years ago, I was on a cruise. I was in Santo Domingo and I was actually on my way up a mountain to do some ATVs and I had a panic attack and um, they had to bring me back down. So I'm definitely no stranger to it and it's not something that I'm ashamed of. I think that it's who I am and it's just part of me. It's obviously something that makes me the person that I am. It's not, you know, like a wonderful thing, but it's something that I've been learning how to cope for with my entire life. I'm on pills, I take Prozac, I take it once a day. I've had different therapists, I've had different psychiatrists, um, I've tried getting off the pill, I've gotten off it and then I've had to get back on. This last time I tried to get off, I didn't do it correctly and like I was feeling dizzy. Point being is that I was like, this is not the life that I wanna live. Like, I'm not huge on medicine, on pills especially. When your quality of life is crap, then you need to have the pill and it's like, from day to night how different my life is. It's not something that a lot of people understand and I think now I'm so happy there's much more awareness to it and people understand a little bit more but when I was in high school, it was my first year freshman, I went straight from middle school which background, this middle school is a very small like family um, oriented, everyone knows each other, like you know your everyone's mom, dad, grandmother, sister, aunt, uncle, you know everybody, it's like very small, tight knit. You basically go there from kindergarten to eighth grade, so you've been there for a really long time. And then I go into this high school, I don't really know many people. There's freshmen, there's sophomores, juniors, seniors, and 9-11 happens. I, after 9-11, like I was, I did not want to go to school. I witnessed this girl passing out because her blood sugar dropped. Kids, being kids, started saying that she was possessed because it, it was a Catholic school, she was possessed and all this stuff. And it just gave me so much anxiety because at the time that was my thing. Like I was so fearful of passing out. I didn't want to go to school. I would go to school and like, I'd have to step out, go to the bathroom like a million times because I just needed to get out. Like I felt so overwhelmed in class. I needed to like text my mom, call my mom, do something. They didn't understand in the school. They had no idea. They just thought that I was a troublemaker kid. They basically had the Dean of Students following me all around. They would, she would follow me to the bathroom. She would follow me everywhere. And she would tell me like, you can't be going to the bathroom. You can't go to the nurse's office. Like ev all day, every day. How do you think that's gonna make someone with anxiety feel? 10,000 times worse. So kind of the end all for me was there was a school dance. So it had supposed to be like a fun extra curricular activity. And um, it was at night. I didn't really know many people. I had like some of my old friends from school, but they had like their new friends. So I felt really alone. I was starting to get anxious. I was starting to get like sort of a panic attack. I went to the nuns and I was like, I want to leave. And they told me no. And I was like, are you kidding me? This isn't even school. This is like a fun activity. I want to leave. Like my mom is outside waiting. If you want, you can talk to her. I want to leave and they wouldn't let me leave and I had to wait until the end of the dance and I felt like part of my anxiety is feeling I have to feel in control in my mind I have to know that I'm able to get out if an emergency happens or if I feel anxious or something like that the fact that that was not happening and that if I had an emergency I was stuck in there was just making things so much worse so I switched schools right in the beginning of the year I think it was like a month or two that I went there and <sighs> night and day. The nurse in the school that I went to, my high school, was, she was God sent. Like, I literally think she was an angel that God put in there to help me. And she also suffered from anxiety, so she knew exactly what was going on. She's like, listen, I don't want you to have to miss school. Because my thing was just, I would call my mom and I'd want to get out of school. So she's like, I don't want you to miss. 
So just come to my office, so we'll talk, we'll hang. And that's what I would do. Like she let the teachers know and um, I would just go whenever I felt anx anxious. I would go to her office, sit there, we'd talk and it passed. And then we talk about everything and I was going less and less and less to her office until I finally didn't have to go anymore. It was funny because that was her last year there. She ended up retiring after that and it was just like she just waited for me to be able... I think if it wasn't for her, I would not have graduated high school because I could not find a way to go to school. It was like godsend. Like I said, she really helped me a lot. You know, time goes on and you become a doll and stuff. You think, oh, I'm fine, whatever. And then, you know, it kind of, your anxiety flares up and acts up. And then I recently, I think I've been going with her for almost a year now. Um, I found a friend of mine recommended me to this psychologist and her name is Nani Solares. She is, amazing she not only has helped me with my anxiety but she has helped me in all aspects of my life and she just has this different philosophy and way of like teaching you things that i recently went to colombia for a wedding and i was in the middle of going to get a panic attack the same thing that happened to me um a couple years back in santo domingo like i started feeling the racing heart and i just like remember all the things that she's telling me this is just your mind being fearful you literally have been brainwashing yourself which i did we were going up to go to this rock and we had to go like 7, 000, uh, 700 steps and it was super high. So I kept, you know, I was making myself anxious at this point. And I just kept remembering that, you know, this is, this is fear. Anxiety is just fear. You're fearful of this thing. You're fearful that you're gonna be two hours away from your hotel. You're fearful that you have to go up. And like, so I started feeling that way and I just started doing everything that she like grounding myself, like she's taught me and it just went away and I was fine the rest of the trip, like completely fine. I ended up getting sick, which was another one of my fears forever has been to get sick in a different country. And especially now with COVID, it was a fear of, is it COVID? You know, what's gonna happen? I was fine, like my biggest fear of happened of getting sick in a different country and I was fine. And there's been a lot of things going on these last couple weeks health-wise um, with my parents, my whole family. And I think that if it wasn't for Nani, I would have probably done very bad and been very anxious. And I haven't been, I've been so calm like my mom had a brain hemorrhage. Me, of a couple years ago, would have thought that the same thing would have happened to me. And I would have been so fearful for it. And now it's just like, obviously it's a horrible thing that happened to her, but I'm not fearing that it's gonna happen to me. So I've definitely grown and just in every aspect of my life, I've seen that she's really helped me grow. And just to like clarify, my anxiety is about like diseases and dying from like, I used to think I had a brain tumor. I was fearful of passing out in public. Um, now, like it before, it used to be shortness of breath. Like I was terrified of like just not being able to breathe, heart attack. So those are that's my anxiety, and it was very debilitating. Like I didn't want to do anything. I'm a person that loves to travel, and you know it sucks that you're planning a trip and the only thing that you can think of instead of how much fun you're gonna have is am i gonna feel anxious during this trip like what is my anxiety gonna be like how am i gonna feel what if i have a panic attack and so so many of that um i think the fact that i've gone through it in another country on a trip is kind of made me stronger and Nani's just way of teaching you like through your mind and your subconscious and your conscious and it's kind of like telling yourself every day these affirmations and telling yourself every day that you can get through this it's just a thought in your brain you have to rewire your brain she is amazing and i've had therapists all sorts of therapists and she has completely completely changed my life not only with the anxiety but career wise i just feel so much happier and so much more like positive and like you can throw anything at me and I it's not gonna bring me down yeah you know I'll have my moments of like I'm human feel overwhelmed and stuff but I just kind of like 
I talked to her about it and she's just amazing. So I actually have an appointment with her today. I'm gonna interview her, just kind of go over a little bit of how she does things since it is Mental Awareness Month. So I'm gonna take you guys along with me. We'll talk to her a little bit because she's just, she's just amazing. And again, if you are suffering with any type of mental illness, mental health, please, you know, contact somebody, even if it's just me, if you don't know who else to talk to, I am always here. I've been through it. I've I've dealt with it my entire life. I've been with people that have like other depression and all sorts of stuff. In our family, there's been people that have committed suicide. Like obviously I'm not a medical professional and my first thing would be to go to a medical professional. But if you do need to talk because you don't feel comfortable with anyone, at least I'm always here to talk. There's no judgment, absolutely judgment-free zone. Whenever you feel like you have no one else in this world to talk to, you always have me. Hi, I'm psychotherapist Nani Solares and thank you so much, Monica, for having me on. I really appreciate you also spreading the message during Mental Health Awareness Month of the importance and the benefit of mental health treatment for those who need it. Um, I am a pretty much a family therapist at this point. I've worked in different settings. I worked in the prison setting. I've worked in, in a hospitalization setting. I've worked in agency settings. I've had the benefit of being able to work with different populations of individuals, which has given me a great awareness of the needs and the struggles of people in our community. Um, not only that, but I am also somebody who has been on my own healing journey for 20 years, which for me is the most important part of what makes me the therapist that I am. I very much am a cognitive behavioral type therapist. I do believe in exploring our past to understand ourselves better. But at the end of the day, what keeps us really stuck today is not so much what happened in the past, but how what happens in the past frame the way that we see ourselves today or the ways that we tend to perceive reality today. So I'm very much focused on helping individuals understand the programming that is making them act the way or behave the way they are and that is causing them to react and respond in patterned type ways. We are creatures of habits. Everything we do, we do because we have been programmed through our experiences to do them, to react, to behave in certain ways, to think in certain ways, to speak in certain ways. And so for me, it's very important to understand as the clinician what it is about my client's programming that is affecting their life. We talk about the past in order to understand that better but for me, we're not gonna stay there. We're going to understand it so we can understand ourselves and I'm gonna help them identify what we call uh, self-defeating belief systems, irrational thought patterns, or cognitive distortions. In the cognitive behavioral approach, they call this form of treatment cognitive restructuring where we actually help the individual change their belief systems, change their mindsets, because the belief is that if we change our belief systems and we change our mindsets and we change the way that we respond and perceive things, then we can actually change our circumstances. And so, you know, you've all heard, change your mind, change your life. This is a reality. At the end of the day, our thoughts are the most important thing. I also see a very, very big link between our mental health and our physical health. And a lot of people don't really emphasize this, but I do believe that one of the greatest and most powerful preventive factors is our mental health. To have inner peace and to find inner happiness and to love ourselves radically brings not only mental and emotional health, but it also brings physical health. I think that a lot of therapists have similar approaches to me. I think that every therapist you see is going to do some cognitive behavioral therapy. I hope so anyway, but some might be more focused on like the psychodynamic approach, like more of the, the Freudian approach or the very analytical approaches uh, that focus a lot on the past. 
I don't like to get my clients stuck on the past. I like for them to understand the past but not move forward. This is one of the differences, I think, between me and some other therapists. And also, I also believe that one of the, the things that really informs the work that I do with my clients is my own healing work. And so I have a personal understanding of healing, um, self-esteem, recovering from addictive behaviors and patterns, overcoming self-defeating habits, and reprogramming my mind through a journey. I'm also very big on helping my clients understand their own codependency patterns. Codependency is like a, a niche for me, I believe, at this point. It's only because I've done such deep codependency work in myself that I really do see it in other people. And codependency healing is all about learning to find enoughness and completeness within ourselves so that we can actualize and thrive in life. And so these are some of the things that are most important for me in my work with individuals. There is a stigma sometimes with therapy, but thank God we're living in a day and age where, at least here in the United States, a lot of that stigma is being removed. We're understanding people are hurting, people are struggling, especially with the last few years that we've all gone through a lot. Collectively, as a planet, we've gone through a lot, and we are seeing and understanding the need for mental health treatment. So. A lot of the stigma is gone, but I find that sometimes people are just afraid to know themselves, to start to opening some of those Pandora's boxes that they have sealed so tight that they're afraid. What if I start looking into myself and start discovering myself and I never come back from that? Or what if I go mad? Or what if I don't come back from it? What if, what if I don't like what I find? Well, look, at the end of the day, it, it does take courage to heal. It does take courage to understand ourselves better. It does take courage to learn about ourselves in a deep way and to self-reflect and to build self-awareness. But like Socrates pointed out many, many, many moons ago, the, the unexamined life is not worth living. So you have two choices here. You either do your work and thrive, or you don't do your work and you continue to live out day-to-day -day subconscious destructive patterns that you will have absolutely no power to overcome unless you start to get to know yourself better, understand yourself better, and start looking at some of the things that are, are causing the patterns in your life. And I promise you that what you will find in this journey, yes, there are moments of healing that are tough and, and scary and uncomfortable. And, and yes, therapy can be very uncomfortable, but you will ultimately find you. And the one thing that you cannot do without experiencing in this life is finding the real authentic you that is within you to discover. And only you can do that through this journey of courage, of learning about yourself, knowing yourself, and healing. And I promise you, it will bring powerful, powerful results. It is a process, and it's a lifelong process. It never ends. You know, self-improvement never ends. It just gets bigger, it just gets deeper, it just gets more powerful. So, while as the, whereas the beginning of healing is uncomfortable and sometimes difficult, you know, the process of self-improvement, the process of personal evolution, the, pro the process of growing is actually a really beautiful part of the human life experience. Maybe even the most beautiful part. So I, I promise you it's not something you should forego. I, I do not, do not cling to your comfort and miss out on not only the best life that you are here to live, but just you, period. Knowing you and loving you in an intimate way. I think there's different forms of therapy and you, some people wanna go to therapy because they wanna grow and they want to, you know, just get better. Or they wanna overcome some obstacles that they're dealing with. This is more existential type of therapy. You know, they might be pretty healthy, but they're just struggling with certain, certain things wanting to get better, wanting to grow, wanting to evolve, 
well, that's one form of therapy. But sometimes if you are really dealing with emotional problems, if you continue to be your own worst enemy, if you are bogged down with depression and anxiety, I promise you, you don't have to live that way. There are professionals that are able to help you through that. You don't have to stay stuck. So how do you know if you need a therapist? Well, number one, sometimes you just want one because you want to grow and that's a beautiful thing. And sometimes you know you need one because you've got issues and you're looking in the mirror and you're acknowledging and admitting to yourself, I've got issues and I need some help and I'm going to take that step. It's a very powerful step. It's a courageous step. But I promise you, once you start talking about things, then you actually start to just even get free just from that talking process of starting to let things go. And I promise you that whatever therapist you see is not gonna be judging you or judging what you say. Most of us have heard everything under the sun. So, you know, feel free to go to a therapist and be able to talk about anything because you will not be judged. Their job is to support you and help you understand yourself in a better way. Anxiety is a disorder that so many people struggle with. I believe everybody struggles with anxiety to some degree unless they have done some real Zen work. I have been meditating for 20 years and living a spiritual life for 20 years. I do not experience problems with anxiety in my own life anymore. I have healed them. You can heal anxiety too, but the keys to healing anxiety, really, honestly speaking, are becoming in control of our thinking. We have to become in control of our thinking. We have to clear our mind. We have to think positively. We have to have a positive mind and positive thoughts. All of these negative thoughts, all of these worries, I, I always tell my clients, if it's negative, worrisome, or repetitive, it belongs in the garbage, you shouldn't be thinking it. Also, thinking is about quality, not quantity. Most people are barraging their brains with constant, incessant thoughts all day long that are just fatiguing the mind and the body and causing all sorts of destructive problems in their lives. And so we do need to get a hold of our thinking. We need to reprogram our mind. There is no other way to say it. There is no pill that's gonna take away your anxiety because there's no pill that can control your own thinking. It is your job to become the gatekeeper of your thinking, to learn to think with purpose and intention. That is the key to overcoming anxiety and also the practice of meditation over time also allows us to heal anxiety and bring more quiet and more stillness into our body, which then we can take into our day-to-day -day life experience as well. Um, all of this, guys, all of this can be overcome, I believe that, but it is a process. Um, it does not, you know, last a month or, or even a year. I've been on my journey for 20 years now and I can see myself on the journey for another 20 and still growing and still learning and still expanding. So that's the beauty of it is that it has no end and it, it's very powerful and beautiful. The bad part about it is, is if you think this way where you want everything to have a destination and you just want to arrive and you want to be there yesterday afternoon, then you're not going to like this conversation because this is not something that we do for a year or two or even five. This is actually a lifelong journey of continuing to better ourselves, continuing to evolve, continuing to learn to manage and cope with life effectively, continuing to learn to love ourselves and to live our authentic life, to, to learn to live some kind of a spiritual reality too, you know, this is you know, there's great power in, in the spiritual journey and, and not necessarily the religious, but the spiritual and the Zen, which is just finding your peace, finding your stillness and, and learning to respond and embrace whatever life brings. So I hope that this is helpful. Um, I promise you that we are here to help and please do not be afraid to ask for help because in my life, it made all the difference. I'm here today not only because of the work that I've done, 
but because there have been so many people along the path that have helped me along as well. So thank you and good luck.